professor that I was interviewing for this video, Professor David Sinclair, points out, as you get older, the risk of horrible diseases, things like diabetes and cancer, arthritis, all those sorts of things, it increases exponentially. The point of slowing aging and extending human lifespan is to extend the healthy lifespan, also called the health span. After reading Professor Sinclair's book and doing an interview with him, I think it seems much more possible, and in fact plausible, that we'll make some progress over controlling aging in our lifetimes. First question you need to answer is, why do we age in the first place? I mean, what really is aging? Telomeres. These are the end caps on your chromosomes, and every time a cell divides, the telomere gets a bit shorter. So it was thought that these uh, telomeres are kind of like the tips of your shoelaces, and they prevent the chromosome from fraying. But there are other signs in older bodies that you have old cells. There are an accumulation of things that are called senescent cells. They're essentially these zombie-like cells that just go on living in your body and inflaming the cells around them. There's uh, poor intercellular uh, communication. There's mitochondrial dysfunction. Those are the powerhouses of the cell. There are these eight or nine different features of older cells, and they are the hallmarks of aging. Hypothesis was that it was damage to our DNA, mutations to our DNA that happened over the course of our lives that led us to be older. But evidence since then has suggested that that is not really the case. I mean, you can take an adult cell and you can clone it into a new organism. And that organism appears to live about as long as non-cloned organisms of the same species. So in that way, it seems like all the information is still there in the DNA. So if we're not losing information in our DNA, then what is the reason for aging? Professor Sinclair suspects that the loss of information is in our epigenome. So what is the epigenome? Every cell in your body has the same DNA. But different cell types have different epigenomes. They have different ways of packaging that DNA, coiling up, you know, a lot of it so that it's not red, and leaving some parts of the DNA spooled out so it's easier to transcribe and turn into proteins and run that cell. So the epigenome is responsible for turning on or turning off different parts of the DNA. And the way it does that is with proteins called histones, that uh, essentially the DNA is wrapped on, and also things like uh, methylation. So there's these chemical signaling markers which are placed on the DNA in certain positions. So the idea is when your body is first forming, the epigenome is what tells your cells what type of cell to be. But as you get older, Professor Sinclair's hypothesis is that we are losing information in the epigenome. And that's important because if a skin cell needs to uh, remain a skin cell. And if you don't have the epigenome, the skin cell will forget what type of cell it is. And it might turn into a brain cell, which may not be that bad, but if your brain turns into a skin cell, you've got a problem. And I think that's largely what aging is. Stuff happens when you get older, right? You start to get hair growing where it shouldn't, ears, nose, back. That's cells losing their identity. Cells go, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. I'm not reading the right genes anymore. So when you go out in the sun and not like today, but on a, on a day where there's a lot of sun, you'll break your chromosomes. And in the effort that the cells go to to stick the chromosome back together, you know, the DNA isn't just flailing around, it's actually bundled up. The cell has to unwrap it, recruit proteins to help, join it together, and then they have to go back and reset the structures. And that resetting of the epigenome happens about 99%. That 1% is the aging process. So over time, histones are not returned to the right places, and DNA methylation is added in places where it shouldn't be. We can read that methylation pattern, and I could tell you how old you are, exactly, and when you're even going to die. <laughs> how could you tell that? Well, the, it's a clock. We call it the Horvath clock, named after my good friend Steve Horvath. And so these little chemicals that accumulate on the DNA, like uh, plaque on the teeth, we can read that, and the more you have, the older you are, biologically. The clock of aging is due to the loss of the information in the cell. And one way to accelerate that is to go break a chromosome. Instead of going in the sun, we engineered a mouse where we could break its chromosomes. 
not enough to cause mutations. The cells put the, the DNA back together, so we didn't lose any genetic information. But if we're right about the epigenetic information theory of aging, those mice should get old. And that's exactly what happened. It's gray, it's got a hunchback, it's got dementia, all its organs look old. There's this theory that billions of years ago, early bacteria took an important evolutionary step. They actually developed two different modes of living. When times were good, they used their energy to grow and reproduce. But when conditions were tough, they used their energy to protect and repair their cells. They evolved what Professor Sinclair calls longevity genes. These genes, triggered by adversity, create enzymes which, among other things, maintain the epigenome. And today, those same longevity genes can be found in bacteria and us. We have these hormetic response genes, or longevity genes, that are in all of our cells. And they sense when we've run a lot, we've lost our breath, or we're hungry, we're a little bit hot, a little bit cold, that these genes are turning on our general defenses against aging. So what is that? So parts of our cells fall apart, they can put them back together. Proteins misfold, they can get rid of them or put them back together. The ends of the chromosomes get shorter, they can lengthen them. A lot of processes that go on, but one of the most important, I think, is maintaining the information, the epigenetic information in the cell, so that our cells don't forget what to do. There are three types of longevity gene. They're the ones we work on called sirtuins, and they control the information in the cell. In fact, sir in the sirtuin stands for silent information regulator, number two. There are other ones. The other group is called AMP kinase, or AMPK. This group of genes senses how much energy we're, we're taking in, for, mostly in the form of sugar. And then the third group is called mTOR, and these genes control and respond to how much uh, amino acids we're taking in. So if you eat a, eat a giant steak, you've got a lot of amino acids coming into your body. That'll actually prevent mTOR from hunkering down and keeping you being longer lived. So the mouse experiments actually bear this out. The best way to ma make a mouse live longer is to reduce the amount of time it eats, so periodic fasting, intermittent fasting, uh, to keep it a little bit cool, and to restrict its amino acids. That's the recipe for long life for a mouse. And it's true for monkeys as well. There have been calorie restricted studies where these monkeys for 15 years didn't eat as much food as the ones that gorged themselves whenever they wanted. And they were protected. They didn't just age slower, they didn't get as much diabetes and heart disease. They were actually fit and healthy when the control group, eating whatever they wanted, aged and became sick quicker. There are these molecules that turn on the sirtuin pathway and trick the body. And so, for example, in the lab, if I give some of our mice a molecule called NMN, which raises the level of a chemical called NAD, you get hyperactive defenses in the body. These mice that we gave NMN to ran 50% further, but actually some of them ran so far that the machine, the little treadmill, stopped working. And we had to reprogram software because this program had never seen a mouse that ran more than three kilometers. Uh, yeah, so these are ultra marathoners. And if we did that to humans, imagine you could have 90-year-olds winning uh, Olympic medals. So to sum up, there are six things that you can do right now to slow the rate of your aging. Starting with zero, Avoid DNA damage. Wear sunscreen, avoid x-rays, and all that sort of stuff. Number one, eat less. Caloric restriction. Number two, eat less protein, because your body has ways of detecting how much of that you're taking in. Number three, do some exercise. High intensity interval training. Get your heart rate up to 85%, make your body feel like you're running from a lion or something. Number four, be uncomfortably cold. Or number five, be uncomfortably hot. All of these things will trigger your body's longevity genes into maintaining your epigenome, going into repair and protect mode rather than grow and reproduce. And if you think about those things, those are generally all the things that we don't do. But what if slowing aging isn't enough for you? Well, this is where my interview with Professor Sinclair took an interesting turn, because he's actually done some research on reversing aging. So how would you do that? Well, effectively, you would need to take the epigenome and reset it back to an earlier time. But how is that possible? The big breakthrough that we just had in my lab, only you know, about a year or so ago, was to reprogram the eye of a mouse. So we put a gene therapy in the eye of old mice, turned their retinas 
to be young again, reversed aging in their retinas. So those one-year-old mice went back to about two months. And guess what? Those mice could see again, just like they were young again. So the big question is, can you take a mouse way back the whole body and be totally young again? Maybe back from two years back to two months. And that's what we're doing right now. That's pretty exciting. It's, it's freakishly exciting, actually. I thought we'd just slow down aging. Now we're talking about an aging reset. You know what, we, we've only reset the age of the eye once. But how many times can we do this? Maybe it's twice, maybe it's a hundred times.